Today we're going to be talking about turbocharger failures. There was uh, a post recently done on one of the uh, groups where somebody claimed that the turbocharger through an overboost or through an extremely high boost situation bent the blades on the compressor wheel over. Now it landed up with a bit of a, a debate uh, before the admins went and removed the posts and stopped all comments on the posts. I'm glad that happened. I'd just like to um, clarify a few things on this. A lot of people emailed me and asked me to please do some sort of report or give us some sort of light on the subject of an overspeed, what we term a cyclic overspeed. What are the symptoms? How can you see that it is categorically through a turbo failure through a cyclic overspeed? What actually happens to the turbocharger rotating assembly when it experiences an exceptional operating condition like a cyclic overspeed, an overboost, a rotational runaway, um, if you wish? What basically happens to the rotating assembly outside of the bearing system to the actual compressor wheel itself in terms of the material, in terms of the blades? What damage will result to the compressor wheel from the, the cyclic overspeed and that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to reference some of the training uh, uh, material from Garrett which we use in our training uh, courses in our syllabus. At the same time I'm going to show you what equipment we use and how we actually pick up how a compressor wheel behaves and operates in an operating environment and then I'll go into physical uh, uh, photographs and an actual case study that we did for a customer of ours who had a wastegate failure, turbocharger went into an overboost situation and the wheel obviously was affected by that. The bearing system failed first, the thrust failed first before the actual compressor wheel went into a burst. However, just before the burst, to verify the actual training material that you'll see inside the Garrett syllabus, um, you'll see photographs of our bullet compressor that we designed um, and you'll basically see that coming up shortly. So let's talk a little bit about the compressor wheel and rim speed of a compressor. Typically you will find that in an OEM application at normal operating conditions the rim speed, the outer circumference of a compressor wheel will exceed 1,900 kilometers an hour. Okay, fact. You can contact Garrett, you can contact Borg Warner, you can contact any turbocharger manufacturer that you wish to verify these uh, uh, facts. The rim speed, outside rim speed of the exducer of a compressor wheel will exceed 1,900 kilometers an hour. Fact. Now, is it possible for blades on the compressor, inducer blades, to bend over, fold over backwards due to a cyclic overspeed, due to an extreme high speed situation, a runaway, a boost creep, whatever the case might be? No, it is not. It is not possible because of the way a compressor is designed. You will find that a compressor wheel, it doesn't matter what wheel it is, it doesn't matter how many blades it's got, whether it's cast, whether it's bullet, whether it's titanium, it doesn't matter what it's made from, is designed to vibrate. That's why it's called blade excitation, both in the turbine as well as the compressor stage. Now, how do you analyze during a design phase the vibrations of a compressor, where the vibrations are, and, made bla and make blade thickness and aerodynamic changes accordingly. Well, you need something called a holographic photograph. Now, there's a specific machine, a specific camera, which takes holographic photographs of rotating or devices in operation. And what a holographic photograph will show you is vibrations, designed to depict vibration through discoloration. So it will have You'll see on the screen now, it will have a photo of a dark section of, in this specific case, a compressor wheel, where you will see the tips of the blades will be dark, will be black, and they will all be a different size. That is indicative of vibration. Now, what we're looking for is how far does that vibration during normal operating conditions extend into the blade area from the tip. 
And you will notice as well that only the tips are vibrating. You do not see a discoloration, a dark color, a black color, anywhere else on the rotating assembly or on the compressing wheel itself. Now, when you exceed the limit of a said design and material blade, the first thing that will happen before the blade goes into a burst is the tips will break off. Fact. I can reference the Garrett syllabus now. He has a page from the actual syllabus and it indicates the tips of the blades will break first. Now, if you look back to the holographic photograph, you will find that where the actual discoloration or the dark black section appears on the tips of the blades is exactly where those blades will break off. How does that happen? First of all, you are in what we term a cyclic fatigue cycle. So the blade with every cycle is like taking a piece of wire or material or aluminium or whatever it is and bending it. And the more you bend it, the closer you will get to its cyclic fatigue limit or its cyclic fatigue life. And eventually you will have a fracture, a surface fracture. And as soon as, you, the, uh, as, soon as the surface fracture occurs or the micro fracture crack, on the surface of the material, regardless of what the material is made from, you will basically have your initiation point. And then through what we term striations, witness marks, we will be able to, turn, we'll be, we'll be able to zoom in with a, with a scanning electron microscope and tell you exactly how many cycles it took for that piece of material to actually break. And that's also a fact. It's a metallurgical fact. We have a metallurgical lab in-house where we are able to conduct these analysis and we do this on a daily basis. So we feel very strongly about these facts because they are facts. They are not some thumb suck uh, story. These are metallurgical facts. You can check with any metallurgical engineer that has uh, um, scanning electron microscopes, spectrum analyzers, etc. And you can ask them the question about a fracture, initiation point, striations, and then cyclic fatigue failures and the relationship between all of them. So back to the point, as soon as there is a surface fracture, an initiation point, every cycle that occurs, that fracture will spread. It will tear what we term propagate, okay? It will spread across what we term a, a grain boundary, just like a piece of wood has grain in it. As soon as you have materials like aluminium, ferrous, non-ferrous materials, all of them have got a grain boundary. Unless the material has undergone what they call hipping and hopping. That's for a different discussion. Also a metallurgical term where they destroy the grain boundary. But or as to the best of their ability, they can destroy or interrupt the, uh, the grain boundary. As I said, that's for a different discussion. So what happens is your microfracture will occur at the surface. With every cycle, Fatigue will, in, will be induced into that, uh, in this specific case, compressor wheel blade. And the propagation or the spreading will follow the grain boundary. And as it follows the grain boundary, eventually there isn't enough strength in the remaining material outside of the crack to hold that piece of blade on and eventually the blade breaks off. That is a metallurgical fact. That is a material fact, guys. So before that happens. It is not possible for a blade to fold over. It is absolutely not possible. The only way a blade will fold is if it comes into contact with something. Now, if it comes into contact axially, which is along the shaft, you will find that the blades, and I'll show you pictures just now, of blades that have actually made, run, the, the, the actual radius profile of the compressor has run into the radius profile of its mating housing, and the blades have bent over. That is the only way that that will occur. However, on, this, on the face of the blade, you will always see witness marks where it's made contact with its mating housing. At the same time, there will always be a burr on the trailing edge of the blade where, where the actual uh, um, opposite to the direction of rotation, where the blade has made contact to its mating housing. I don't want to get too technical in this video, but I'll uh, move on and show you some photographs now of the actual uh, uh, failures that we've had and, and, and done reports on and done analysis on. I hope this has been educational. I hope it hasn't been too high level technical. Let me know what you guys think. If you've got any questions about any other failures, let us know. We'll be actually creating a uh, turbo tech or a turbo failure analysis uh, section of our YouTube channel quite soon and we'll obviously upload uh, lots more of these type of failures so that you can give you guys a little bit more insight into how turbos live, how they die and what the big killers of turbos are and how you can visually identify from these things. Hope it's been educational. Have a great one. Sorry Bill, you're the guy that claimed that your, your blades uh, folded over. 
sorry mate, you're absolutely wrong. Um, if you'd like any more info as to how to accurately diagnose the typical, the specific failure on your turbo, let us know, send us a, an email and we'll help you uh, get to the bottom of it. But it is not due to a cyclic overspeed fact. Have a good one guys, see you next time. Hard particle was ingested through the air filter, made contact with the blades, and that is the result. In this specific case, the blades have not even bent over backwards. If you have a look at the actual angle of that blade, the leading edge has been damaged. Let me show you another compressor wheel. This specific compressor wheel has had foreign object damage as well. However, fine particles, and what it's done is it's taken the edge of the blade away. So the end of the blades are supposed to be at a 90 degree angle. They should be square. They should have a sharp edge on the end or at the outer edge of the inducer blade. On this specific case, it has suffered foreign object from fine particle and that has worn the blade away. And you'll see that visible from the leading edge of the inducer. And you'll notice that underneath, you'll still see small slight impact damage. But the underside of the blade, in comparison to the top side of the blade, looks like it's been media blasted, which in actual fact it has. Still, none of the blades are bent. This specific case, we have got a radial bearing failure. In other words, a bearing failure in that direction, not axial direction. Okay? And that is what allowed these blades to make contact with the compressor housing. Still, the blade has not folded over. It has made contact, as you can see, by the edge of the blade or the side of the blade, and it has burred over in the opposite direction to rotation. Still, none of the blades have folded over. Now, if it's not possible for a blade to have folded over once, make, once made con making contact with the housing, then I can promise you now, air and air pressure will never fold the tips of the blades over. Absolutely not possible. Here's a turbine blade. Okay, it's, ignore the fact that the shaft is missing, but it has also radially had a bearing failure and has made contact with its mating housing along the entire profile from inducer to exducer. And you will notice that in the opposite direction of rotation, you have burrs. Once again, no blades are folded over. This specific failure over here has suffered foreign object damage. Forget about the bearing related failure, but this has suffered foreign object damage to these blades and obviously made contact with its mating housing. Once again, no blade has folded over. However, where you find contact, you will see a burr, quite a, a serious burr generated from the impact or from the contact made between the mating housing and itself. This turbine shaft, once again, foreign object, where the impact, remember this is the direction of rotation, where the impact has occurred on the inducer blades, the blade is folded over opposite to the direction of rotation. But at the same time, you will find that these blades have also made contact with the housing. And one or two of these blades have started to bend, as you can see there, opposite to, rota opposite to the direction of rotation. So it takes extreme contact and extreme force between a blade and its housing, or a blade and something, in order to fold it over or bend it over. Cyclic overspeed will never achieve that. Okay, so here we have a picture of the blade. This is a Turbo Direct Design blade, which has, in fact, suffered a cyclic overspeed. The uh, customer had a problem with the wastegate, went into an overboost situation, and you can see the inducer blades, some of them had made contact with the side of the uh, compressor housing, the side of the blade, um, but none of the blades had folded over. At the same time, this next picture shows you the rear, the back disc of the blade, and you will notice clearly that the atomic structure has started to uh, become disturbed. And uh, you see the orange peel effect that was mentioned in the Garrett uh, uh, training um, excerpt that I showed you earlier. The actual blade itself is, to the touch, is very, very rough and very wobbly, if that's the correct term. Um, and if this wheel had to continue to rotate like it was at that speed, it would have gone into a burst. But none of the blades are bent over.